I really love these games, and I would probably place them alongside Hitman for third-person stealth games, but there is one thing, and maybe I've been spoiled by Hitman on this issue, because that was the first stealth game where I really got into the stealth, but where Hitman, with a couple of exceptions, is very open and very much about you finding your own solution to the problem at hand. You know, think the first Deus Ex game, System Shock 2. In general, I think that aspect comes from RPGs. I don't play them a lot myself. And Splinter Cell just really isn't that open. It's very linear. Say you have to get from one building to another building find the wire that connects them, slide down it. It's fun, I'm not arguing with that, and again, I love these games, but that is the only way you're gonna get from the first building to the second. Say you have to get into the second building you got to. There's only one door. Maybe there are a couple of guards, and you either have to sneak past them or take care of them, but that, you know, there is some freedom to how you take care of the problems, but usually you're just gonna wind up either sneaking up to people and taking them out without them noticing you, or if that's an impossibility, taking them out with the rubber projectiles, with a sticky shocker. So there is not a lot of replayability, especially in the first one. But that is the only complaint I can really make. And I will grant, it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world. I mean, even thinking up these scenarios and thinking of cool ways for the player to approach them, that can be hard work. And for their efforts, Ubisoft gets, you know, two big thumbs up. The graphics are amazing. Voice acting tends to be really good. You really can't go wrong with Michael Ironside. Even his death scream is awe-inspiring. The missions make a lot of sense, and several of them are very memorable. The storylines feel quite realistic. You know, this is Tom Clancy's writing. Political thrillers is what he does. It's all he does. You can't stop him. He's really freaking good at it. And in accordance with his writing and his having created Splinter Cell, you know, this began as his series of books, the realism is immensely high. So is the level of detail. That was the concept. Moving on to Splinter Cell from 2002. The good news? Tom Clancy wrote it. The bad news? Tom Clancy wrote it. At this point, they hadn't quite ironed out how realistic it should be and where you kinda gotta admit, okay, if we keep entirely to a realistic approach, this isn't gonna be as much fun for the player. In this game, if you don't have a weapon drawn and you're spotted, you're gone. I mean, I'm not talking about a bunch of guards will swarm out and you will be given the Sonny from the Godfather treatment. I'm saying if a single guy spots you, you won't have time to take care of him before he takes care of you. You see, bringing up your gun and then aiming and then shooting takes a couple of seconds. That doesn't spell best trained spy in the world to me. You also can't knock them out. Basically, if you run up to them and use your melee attack, it'll take two hits to take them out. I think basically what he does is, you know, like, give an elbow, and your enemy will always take you out before you give him that second elbow. There is no room for the elbow. No elbow room. None, I tell you. Another thing is that the jumping looks a little bit awkward. It doesn't feel like a very natural movement, and I think the main problem is that they were designing it with the main idea being that it will work well for jumping into the walls and doing the leg split thing. 
I don't think I ever did use it at any point in the first one. How fast you move is controlled by the mouse wheel. So you can very swiftly slow down or speed up and that is extremely helpful. The graphics are really really good if not entirely smooth as Ubisoft's Prince of Persia trilogy and this only did come out one year before the first of those. Still it looks fantastic. You don't always know for sure where you're supposed to go. And no, that's true of a ton of video games, maybe most, but you do have a team backing you up, and they will contact you every so often. Would it kill them just to tell you, um, do your other right? Something? The map doesn't tell you specifically where you are. It's kind of like a real-world map. Ugh. If you don't already know where you are, the map isn't really going to help you. This goes back and forth between being too easy and too hard. Don't get me wrong though, the gameplay is a ton of fun. It's just a little irritating that in this you might be stuck because you're not sure where you're going. And when you have to sneak there, that becomes all the more annoying. And you just have to keep trying different things until one of them works. Whereas in Hitman, and to an extent also Commandos, especially the second Commandos game, it's really more, okay, here's your assignment, now think of a way to accomplish it. You know, I mean, all three are challenging, but with the other two, it's because you're thinking, okay, how do I best take out this next guy and arouse as little suspicion as possible? And with this, it's more like, okay, do I go here? No. That was 10 minutes. Do I go here? No. 20 minutes. And that just takes away from it a bit. The AI is beyond reproach. They're incredibly responsive and take a smart course of action. You're not just fighting idiots here. You know, the places you infiltrate have guards that know how important their mission is and how vital it is for them to keep everyone out. The score is great and it changes when you're in trouble to let you know. And honestly, you may find yourself humming that kick-ass theme tune to yourself. The characters are credible. The humor is a bit silly, but mostly this is very mature. It never talks down to you. And the humor doesn't take away from the serious tone. But this also isn't drab. In between missions, you see these fake news reports that really add to it. This is very... This ranks tension higher than action, and your main objective is infiltration. It's the year 2004. There are widespread communication shortages in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. After two CIA agents disappear, Sam Fisher is sent in to evaluate the situation and assess the risk. Moving on to Pandora Tomorrow. In 2006, the U.S. military installs a base in East Timor, trying to protect what is called the youngest democracy in the world. The leader of one of the Indonesian militia groups, Sohadi Sadono, entered the US Embassy in Jakarta and takes dozens of civilians and military personnel hostage. The title comes from Sadono's daily call to an undisclosed location in which he utters the words, Pandora tomorrow. In other words, they will not engage the ultimate plan for another 24 hours. As a splinter cell, you're sent in not to rescue the hostages, but to prevent any information from falling into the wrong hands. Sequels are seldom as good as the original. And with stealth games, there's the added problem that some people thought that the original was too difficult, and it also didn't quite have the mass appeal, because minorities should never get what they want. Both of those happened with the Hitman franchise, and the Commandos franchise was made less difficult than the original sequel. Neither of them really happened here. We're still looking at infiltration and tension before action. The gameplay isn't made simpler, although you are given more help so that you aren't as often wondering where you're supposed to go next. 
the changes are all improvements.